in that place is? Well, then simply we can write out alpha equal to b minus 1 times x. Okay? Simply. So it divides. Now, finding this b minus 1 somehow can be troublesome. That can be a little bit difficult. But now we have said, now special case, let me give you an easy case now. But very important, suppose that B0, Bn minus 1 is an amplified new closed map, is an orthonormal. Basis. So it's not just any basis, but it's an orthonormal basis. So the basis where the component are orthonormal of each other, orthonormal of each other. Right? That is, I can B I, let's say B K, can you be J, B L here, for example. I take this tool. This two thing here is equal to 1 in k equal to L and as I said, 0. Right? So the vector are mutually apart of each other and, 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 and when k equal to L, I normalize them to have to leave on. Okay? So that, that's a very nice basis. So what is nice about this basis? If I have this, so now if I write this thing here, and you know that this thing here is nothing but a technique curve. I'm going to do the real vector space now, the simplicity. It just brings the chance to be equal to this. Right? Because that's our inner product. And now, it's not how to imagine this. What I'm going to do now is, what I'm going to do now is I have the matrix B I have early on. So B is all this vector. Okay, and now I write this B transpose. I think the B transpose. So transpose, I take all of this vector and I turn them to be a, a row vector. Okay, so if I have an orthonormal basis, satisfied with this, what B transpose can be? Can be you need, you need the matrix. It is equal to zero anyway, right? So I have a matrix. A matrix, a matrix. Give me a matrix. Everywhere else, they have a zero. Yeah. Except along the diagonal when the same vector hits itself. Right? And have a one. So this thing here, you have a name, it's called identity matrix. Right? It's a matrix R. And now you have something multiplied with something. Give me an identity matrix. What is that to be? This simply a big minus one. Right. So, so simply now, so from there now, what we have is a B just minus one here is equal to B just one. So getting the inverse B here very simple, simply just all the way. So that is an extremely nice property about a nocturnal basis. Now if I take that, huh, so now I have this thing now, and now it's only happened now is this thing, okay. I'm going to have that, then I will equal to B transpose X. It will be transpose X. So let anybody, I have to do this is for general, right? Let me mix this. This is for general here now. So, in this case, only in this case, in this case, I have alpha equal to simply B transpose X. And B transpose is just simply taking this. Now with this. So, or if I have to find all the X, those alpha components, all I have to do here now is I take that row vector multiply the X. And what it is? This is inner product. But extremely simple. The inner product now is taking BI. X. Okay? Very simple. And this is every orthonormal basis satisfies. And later on, we look at the Fourier basis, Wayland basis, we look at this very simple.
for exam uh, case. Alright? And, and, and remember the old example. This basically is an autonomous basis, right? Easy to break five. Have you not got any two guys? They are autonomous. So we showed all the examples, I think those two simply taking this you know blood with that paper. But this is not a venture, it's code for general and autonomous basis. Okay? So let me now try to define, let to define an autonomous basis of extremely important in signal processing. Uh, so that's that clear one? Okay. So we like to define now. Um, an autonomous basis that we would use also in signal processing. So now it is suppose now another example now. I want to know that inside the vector space N is ZA now and. I look into this basis. I want to call them now is I want to define them. Let me let it go to the different way. Um, no, I want to move them in the upside down way. So let me go back to the finger. You probably always see the, 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 the district folio transfer. So this thing here, I'd like to look at the basis is the one that maybe you are quite familiar with. Is the thing of the basis I have now, the F0, F1, and so on. So all of these bases, uh, they are so the first one here is just simply one, one, one. So all one. The second one, it is um, one e j two pi over. So I have CN here. So I have to use uh, the little the capital N. What do you mean the capital N here? And I'm going to have here 2 pi over n, and then I have e j of 2 pi over n times 2. So you see the patterns, right? So that to e to the j of 2 pi over n of n minus 1. Okay. So maybe more general here, if I have a vector f curve here. One is, well, just simply this. The K component here, so the N component here, it is simply E J two pi over N of K now N. Okay. Can you see the pattern? Right? Another pattern of that. Uh, oh. You know, we are at here, here, right? We want to use a rotation that the J you know this is a, the imaginary number, right? Uh, minus one. So that, that is our case. Okay, and I can leave that as an exercise for you to show that this is an orthogonal basis. And you can normalize them, then you have an orthogonal basis. Okay, so I have a basis there. And, um, and if I have a basis, then now, what can I do? Well, I can expand. I can expand. I can expand this basis. Uh, I can take any signal x, and I can write them is equal to some other signal. Let me let me go a little bit careful by putting this. Uh, let me try to use a one of the square root of n. How about that? One of the square root of n. To be able to show that the, the log of this signal is not square root of n. Right? So divide by one of the square root of n, I got a unit log. So if I take that now, so that's the basis now. Is there any vector here, x, 
can be summarized to the capital Kerygia. Kerygia from 0 to n minus 1 of this f, the basic vector x Kerygia. Okay, so that's very simple basic expression of this. And if I can write down now this thing here, and if I write this form here now, uh, and this x term here now, because we can show this thing here as an orthonormal basis, then x term here is simply equal to the inner product of uh, inner product of uh, of f term times this. Right? So this number here is in the